Welcome to Fire Engineering Training Minutes. I'm Mike McAvoy. Today I want to talk about some tips for measuring blood pressure. The first thing about measuring blood pressure is the size of the blood pressure cuff that you're using. If you look at the American Heart Association guidelines for blood pressure measurement, they mention that you should actually measure the circumference of the patient's arm and use a cuff that has a bladder that's the piece that actually inflates on the inside of the cuff equal to two-thirds of the circumference of the patient's arm. None of us carry a tape measure, but if you look at the cuff itself, what you'll find is that the bladder is sized according to the size of the actual cuff. And if you choose a cuff that covers a distance of two-thirds of the patient's extremity that you're measuring, so in this case, if I was to measure blood pressure in the upper arm, I would want a cuff that covers two-thirds of the distance between the elbow and the shoulder. So obviously, this pediatric cuff is far too small. If I was to choose a large adult cuff, it would probably be too big for this patient. And if you use a cuff that's too large, you're going to get blood pressures that are falsely low. If you use a cuff that's too small, you'll get blood pressures that are falsely high. So this cuff which is a normal adult size cuff, is probably the appropriate size to put on this patient. So I'm gonna wrap the cuff around the patient's arm, and now I have the appropriate sized cuff to use on this patient. Where the arm is positioned while you're taking the blood pressure is the second potential cause of error in blood pressure measurement. The extremity that you're measuring the pressure in needs to be at mid-heart level. So mid-heart level, this cuff needs to be right at the position of the middle of the patient's heart. So if you have an individual who's laying on the street on their side or laying on the stretcher on their side and you're measuring a blood pressure, that extremity that you're measuring it in could be above or could be below the heart level. You'll get a false blood pressure based on that. We have a tendency at times depending on our position, to be in a situation where you're standing next to the patient, you may go to measure a blood pressure, and in the process of doing that, you elevate their arm into a position that's higher than the level of the heart. Higher than the level of the heart will give you a falsely low blood pressure. Lower than the level of the heart will give you a falsely high blood pressure. Now, in the environment that we work in, oftentimes you can't hear blood pressures. It's difficult with the stethoscopes that we carry to hear an actual blood pressure. So there's a couple things that you can do. One of them you're familiar with, which is palpation. You can palpate the radial pulse on a patient, pump the blood pressure cuff up, and as the blood pressure cuff deflates, you feel the radial pulse come back. That's your systolic blood pressure. And we'll oftentimes write that as the blood pressure over P for palpation. If you have a pulse oximeter, you could put the pulse oximeter on the patient's finger in the extremity that you're measuring the pressure, pump the blood pressure cuff up until the pleth waveform disappears, and I'll pump it up on this patient right now. I look at the pulse oximeter. At some point, that pulse oximeter waveform goes away. As I let the air out of the blood pressure cuff, I watch the pulse oximeter waveform and I see the pulse oximeter waveform reappear. I look at the blood pressure cuff at the time that that waveform reappears, and I see that this patient's blood pressure is 118 over P or palpation or over whatever you want to do that abbreviates a pulse oximeter. So that would be for a high noise environment or the environment that we often work in, maybe trying to measure a blood pressure in a moving ambulance. The last thing I want to talk about with blood pressure is you do occasionally see patients that are so large that it's impossible to put a blood pressure cuff on their upper extremity where we normally would measure pressure. You may have a trauma patient who has fractures to both arms and you want to measure blood pressure. You may have a very small pediatric patient where the upper extremities are extremely difficult to get a cuff on because they're so small. So in very young children and in newborns, we'll often measure pressures in the legs.
In trauma patients with multiple upper extremity fractures, we may measure blood pressure in the lower leg. That size of the cuff, again, is important. If you're putting a blood pressure cuff on the lower extremity, it needs to cover two-thirds of the distance between the knee and the ankle. You could do that in an upper extremity as well and take a blood pressure cuff and wrap that cuff on the lower part of the upper extremity. Again, that cuff needs to cover two-thirds of the distance between the elbow and the wrist. You would measure the pressure by palpation. You perhaps could listen with a stethoscope, but here's the other important piece going back to what I had talked about earlier. If I was to measure a pressure in this lower extremity, that extremity at the time of measurement needs to be at mid-heart level. If I was doing it in the leg, the patient needs to be flat so that that leg at the time that you're making the measurement is at the same level as the heart in order to get an accurate blood pressure. So those are some tips for blood pressure measurement. I'm Mike McAvoy. Thanks for watching Fire Engineering Training Minutes. Be smart out there.